let us get into the fun of using logarithms, and that would be solving exponential equations. I mean, does it get any better than that? So consider the equation 2 to the x equal 30. Um, we've solved these before, where we tried to get 2 to some power on both sides. 2 to the x equals 2 to the, uh-oh, 30 is not a power of 2. So this method doesn't work for us. We can use logarithms. Remember that we can rewrite an exponential equation as a log. Log base 2 of 30 equals the exponent x. Look at that. Wow. That's amazing. Um, so that's using base 2. Now it says use base 10. Um, how does that happen? Well, what we do, as long as we do an operation to both sides, it's legal. I remember log base 10 is just the common log. We just write log. And now remember, exponents can come down as coefficients with logarithms. So x is equal to log of 30 divided by log of 2. And no, the logs don't cancel out here. That's a big no-no. So what does that mean? It says comment on the answers. What that means is that log base 2 of 30 is equal to log 30 divided by log 2. And this notion right here is something that's called the change of base rule. It's a bit antiquated in that our calculators can do logs base 2 or log base whatever we want. But previous, many years ago I guess, um, calculators could only do natural log and common log. So to calculate something like log base 2 of 30, we would take the log base 10 of 30 divided by log base 2 or log base 10 of 2. Um, the next section in the textbook is all about this. If you want to read about it, cool. Um, is really not that important anymore in my opinion. Calculators can do log base 2 of 30 real quickly, real simply. We don't need this change of base rule. So let's move on. Find x exactly. Um, okay, what's the base here? Log base e. Um, so let's change this to exponential form or log form. Natural log of 30 equals x. Well, x is alone now, isn't it? The exponent's all by itself. x is equal to the natural log of 30. We could plug that into the calculator and get an approximation, but this is exact. Next one. We only get the power by itself. So divide both sides by 3. Is the power by itself? Yes, it is. So let's change it to logarithmic form. e to some power. The log form would be natural log of 7 equals the exponent. Is x alone yet? No, it's not. Multiply both sides by 2. 2 times the natural log of 7 equals x. But we can do better. This 2 can become an exponent. Natural log of 7 squared equals x. And the best way to write this answer is that x is equal to the natural log of 49, because that's 7 squared, ladies and gentlemen. Look how nice this is. Solving for a variable that's in an exponent. Oh my gosh, whoever thought that we'd be able to do this. This is amazing. Okay, exponential growth equation. Consider the equation, p equals blah. Rearrange the equation to give t in terms of p. That means solve this for t. Okay. Well, p divided by 200 equals 2 to the point zero four t, right? Get, we want to get the power by itself. Base is 2, exponent is 0.04t. Now that the power is alone, we change it to a log. What log form should we use? What's the base here? Base is 2. So log base 2 of p over 200 equals 0.04t, equals the exponent. To get t alone, we divide both sides by 
I'm going to write it as 1 over 0.04 log base 2 of p over 200. There's t in terms of p. Now, we could monkey around with this a little bit. Um, 0 0.04, 1 over 0 0.04. That's the same thing as 1 over 4 one hundredths. And 4 over 100 is the same thing as 1 25th. 1 divided by 1 25th is equal to 25. So we could write log base 2 of p over 200 to the 25th if we really wanted to. But you know, we don't have to. Um, find the value of t when p is 6. Well, that's pretty easy right now. We don't have to do any solving. We can just drop 6 in right here. So for part b, log base 2 of 6 over 200 to the 25th equals t. Or, you know, if you feel better about it, Leave the 25 down here as a coefficient, or heck, leave it as 1 over 0.04. It doesn't really matter. We should get the same answer no matter what. And now we're plugging this into our calculator. And my calculator's closed right now. We'll get that opened up for future use. But really, guys, this is plug and chug. 25 times log base 2, 6 over 200. Push enter. We've got t. And please know that it is going to be an approximation. T is approximately some value. Let's go to the next problem. Find the intersection points. Ooh, the exact points of intersection between these two graphs. Oh my gosh, they both involve E, they both got X in the X point. Holy cow. Well, you know what? We know how to find intersection points. We equate equations, don't we? E to the X minus 3 equals 1 minus 3e to the negative x. Hmm. Maybe we should get the things that have e to one side, the things that don't have e to the other side. So e to the x plus 3e to the negative x equals... Um, add four to both. Add three to both sides. We get four. Oh wow! How'd that help us? Hmm. E to the x plus three over e to the x equals four. And this should look familiar to our quadratic units. Let's multiply everything here by e to the x. So now we have e to the x squared plus three equals 4e to the x. This looks strangely like a quadratic. And that's because it is. e to the x squared minus 4 times e to the x plus 3. This bugger's factorable. e to the x minus 3 times e to the x minus 1 equals 0. So, e to the x equals 3, or e to the x equals 1. So we know that x is the natural log of 3, or x is the natural log of 1. Now here's a big question. Natural log of 1, e to what power is 1? better way to write this is x equals 0. So, there are my x-coordinates. We need the y-coordinates now, ladies and gentlemen. So let's make some room here. There's my x's. Let's, how do we find our y's? Well, we plug it back in. We plug back into the original. So, um, you know, choosing between the two, I like the look of this one a little bit better y equals e to the natural log of 3 minus 3. What happens with e to the natural log when I have the base and the log having the same base? 
They obliterate each other, leaving us with 3 minus 3, which is 0. So one point of intersection, natural log of 3 comma 0. Second point of intersection, y equals e to the 0 minus 3. e to the 0 is 1, negative 2. So my other point of intersection is 0 comma negative 2. Two points of intersection for this. We had to use logarithms to get an exact solution for x. Personally, this is beautiful, and I hope you love it as much as I do.